Hey, Doombots, Tony Scangili here with the first team farmable for DSA. Now, there's a lot of different teams you can build in DSA, and there are a lot of different options. There are no truly bad characters, but since this game is about progression, you really want to make sure you're focusing on characters that not only can progress you uh, in many different game modes, such as Tower, uh, PvP Arena, Sorcerer's Tournament, uh, you want some stability going into Club Dungeon and Club Conquest. And we're going to take a look at not only the characters that you have access to early in the game, but the characters you can farm relatively early and what that means. The first thing I will tell you is you don't unlock characters uh, and then pr progress to the next one. You work on entire teams or parts of teams towards uh, a goal a lot of times what you will pay attention to is the opportunity cost of working on character a over character b but since you start the game and i had to check to make sure with a series of standard characters and i have a video above that kind of describes what that was like in the beta it hasn't changed much uh, and since there are certain characters farmable in certain locations uh, it's my opinion and the opinion of uh, a good handful of other players who also start with us that whether you're a free to play player a casual spender or a big blubbery whale this is probably one of the first teams you're going to want to work on uh, and let's let's go into it a little bit so we're going to start with the two characters you have at the beginning you have sorcerer's mickey sorcerer's mickey is pretty good all-around aoe damage dealer he has a pretty acceptable basic uh, and as you upgrade it it has the ability to inflict defense down for two turns in a character making them take extra damage uh, his special is the ability to attack a target uh, six times and each attack will have a chance to reduce turn meter which makes them slower and his ultimate which is also called special for some reason, uh, will hit every single character and also have a chance of applying slow. He's a kingdom character, and that's going to be very relevant. You'll see why in a second. And he's relatively easy to farm early. First of all, you get one. And second, you can see him in the grand campaign as you progress. I think you almost gain access to farm him before you finish the tutorial. So he is a good investment in the early game uh, as a very simple damage dealing debuff character the other character you start with is ariel and i've gone into ariel i did a character spotlight on her but ultimately the biggest benefit is she's the uh, only healer you're going to see in the early game that's reliable especially for heroes but you can kind of use her as a sustain and there's so many game modes where sustain is relevant for example tower is incredibly relevant so anytime you can use a character in a tower that will sustain not only themselves but the rest of their team you're in a good spot the benefit the benefits of using her overall kit are great she has a pretty decent damaging attack uh, that clears taunt or pesky buffs her basic works very well with Mickey in that uh, it hits a target and then any target that has slow. And because of how the speed lines up, when Mickey ults on turn one, her basic, when she takes her turn, can hit pretty much everybody if you know how to target right. And I'll use this team to show. Uh, her leadership ability, uh, which she unlocks at tier four, is phenomenal in the early game as it gives everyone just a small bonus of health which again helps their survivability and she is an oceanic character which will make her useful for clearing uh, i believe tower three and of course the last tower but we're nowhere near that the other two characters that i'm, I'm showcasing here are aladdin and jasmine aladdin you get relatively early uh you get him for free actually from playing through the, the event that unlocks it. But he's also incredibly easily to farm in both Grand Campaign and in the Villains campaign. So as soon as you unlock him, you could feel free to invest as much into him as possible. Just to show you a little bit about his kit, his basic uh, pretty much just hits everybody, but if they are slow or stunned, it does extra damage. That works very well with Mickey, who is slow in characters. And if there happens to be a stun available, 
it'll also work very well. Uh, but his special, especially when you get his ability to tier two, uh, it does a pretty decent chunk of damage, gives him evasion and haste for two turns. So he's not gonna get hit by the next attack that hits him. If Jasmine is a teammate, she also gets an attack in. So it's a big damage attack. This ability is, is the bread and butter. It's a big flanking attack. Now I'm gonna do a video separate that talks about what the different keywords mean, but flanking is basically a row. The way teams are set up are five slots, uh, skipping a space. So it's five rows, two columns each, a total of 10 slots. And you kind of make a W or an M, depending on how you're looking at it, uh, with your characters. That said, there are still extra slots hiding in between that you can place characters if there's a summon or if something moves a character uh, or placed from a spell, you want to make sure that you understand what the placement is. So flanking is everyone in a row. So if there are three characters in the front and two in the back, whomever you hit, it will hit any other character on that entire row, as opposed to something called adjacent, which will hit any character that is within one space of that uh, the target. That said, just to throw it out for a picture, Jasmine, even though there's only two characters next to her, there are a total of five spaces. One, one in front, behind her is three, Aladdin is four, and then next to Jasmine is five. So if, if you were to summon a minion, so she summons Raja, if you were to summon Raja next to her, and someone targeted her with an adjacent attack, it would also hit uh, Raja. The other thing to notice is Chain. Chain is exactly what it sounds like. It hits a character and then has a chance to hit an adjacent character, and depending on how many times it chains, it could go on technically forever. Very few characters have that feature. Uh, Sean Yu does, but that's an important thing to note when looking at characters that have abilities like flanking, etc. So Aladdin's ult hits everyone in a row for a pretty decent chunk of damage, it puts slow on them, which will continue the chain of letting uh, Ariel's basic hit multiple characters and give you a 30% chance to hit any of those targets with turn meter rewind. Turn meter is huge because if you're going, if you're trying to go fast and you're allowing your opponent to go slow or you're forcing your opponent to go slow, you're going to do something called lap them, taking more turns than they are. It's gonna be a terrible nightmare if you're on the other side of this fight. Uh, so you want to be on the side of this fight that's also taking uh, as many turns as possible. And that's what uh, Aladdin will do. He also has a special that's available at tier four that allows him a chance to heal whenever he takes damage. It happens uh, once every three or four turns, depending on how much investment you place in this ability. But Aladdin basically not only can evade a lot of attacks, but sustain himself through a lot, uh, combining with the healing possibility of Ariel and a lot of the slows you're going to be placing gives this team a lot of survivability. Jasmine is weird. Uh, she doesn't do a lot of damage, but uh, she does, on basic, have a chance per Aladdin teammate to afflict offense down and make characters weaker on her basic. This happens whenever it says assist, so when Aladdin causes her to make an assist, she also has a chance of hitting somebody for a decent chunk of damage, and with a 10% chance, to give that character offense down. Not bad. Her special summons Raja. Raja is a tank who takes damage. He doesn't take a lot of it, but he avoids the ability for characters to uh, take a very big hit. Either makes your opponent waste a big hit or uh, makes them waste their turns saving their big hits while you set up the next, especially because your speed is so relevant in this fight. Raja becomes a great tank for at least one hit possibly more depending on how high investment you have in Jasmine and ultimately actually has a pretty decent setup too. He can basic an attack. So he doesn't do anything else but basic, but he lasts long enough usually to either uh, hit someone one time or prevent one of your other important characters from dying. Uh, Jasmine's ultimate is a very big single target attack that can give her evasion. That's it. Evasion is also very important. It keeps her alive and allows her to ramp through her damage and take extra turns without worrying. So good effect. Free Spirit is a free passive. Anytime she takes a turn, there's a chance she just throws a heal on somebody. And it cleanses two harmful effects. 
that's great, especially for characters who have something like a heal block or a slow, a blind. The the ability to remove those, huge, so important, right? So all of the characters work together, and obviously these characters are all level 40, gear tier four, just to kind of showcase what they're capable of. Uh, they won't be as powerful as what I'm showing you, but if you get them to the point, if this is your main team, you will clearly bring them up there with no problem. Now, until you end up unlocking Shan Yu, who is available exclusively in the Sorcerer's Tournament store for Sorcerer's Tournament credits. So he does take a little bit, usually about 10 to 15 days to unlock based on how well you do. You can use a couple of different options. You obviously start with Buzz Lightyear and Sully too. Uh, Sully is a tank. You do not need another tank, even though he does add slow. I think you have enough characters that do that. And I also wouldn't farm Sully. As of right now, I don't believe there's anything he does that's important. However, Buzz, is phenomenal. Buzz is truly a great character. So if you're not spending money, you're not buying a character and you're not working on anything in particular, I would say work on Buzz mainly because the Toy Story event requires a Buzz at X star level to unlock uh, Woody, which then helps you unlock Jesse, which of course unlocks Bo, Bo Peep. The way events work in this game are very strange. You'll see them as they come. But Buzz is a great character. He, just to show you a little bit of what he does, basic attack does damage and has a chance to hit twice. Cool. Special attack is a giant damage attack with a laser from his arm. It's pretty decent damage for a low impact character like uh, like this. Uh, and if Woody's a teammate, which he won't be for a long time, he might assist. Kind of like how Jasmine and Aladdin work. The this is the This is the soup. This is everything for Buzz. This is a big damage attack that deals bonus damage if that target uh, has vulnerable. Vulnerable means that target is likely to be crit on the next attack. So not only does it do more damage, it does more critical damage, huge attack, and it stuns a character for one turn. That's very important. You can take a character out of the fight, which if you kind of see what this entire team is doing, slowing them down, taking away turn meter, you're taking advantage by getting a, a key component out of the fight. Buzz is special. He doesn't really matter for this team, so you don't have to talk about it, but if there's a Toy Story character on the team and it does a, a basic attack, he might assist. That's it. No notes, really. Uh, one of the reasons that's relevant is there's a spell that becomes a Toy Story character that could help him assist. But if you noticed, he wasn't always there. Shan Yu was there. That's because Shan Yu is no joke. So up until you unlock Shan Yu, you could feel free to use leadership ability on Ariel. You'll probably be able to go through a pretty decent chunk of the towers if you build up this team. Once you unlock Shan Yu, this becomes a very different fight for you. Just to let you know, Shan Yu's basic uh, hits a target and then has a 50% chance to hit an adjacent target. And that's what we were talking about with the adjacencies before. So you always want to choose the target you want to hit that is preferably next to somebody else you'd like to hit if you can control that. And remember, adjacency is only a character that's within one spot. So for the most part, if you follow the M, it's, you know, the corners or the back. And if there's a lot of characters, uh, you have a chance to chain to any of them. The special, which is available on turn one, uh, hits all flanking, so an entire row, just like Aladdin's carpet does, and it inflicts defense down on two turns. Uh, there's a 50% chance for this character to gain offense up for two turns. Amazing. Like, it hits an entire row of players, it makes them take extra damage over the next two turns, and he has a chance of doing extra damage over the next two turns. Phenomenal. His ultimate is hit a target for a ton of damage twice. If either of those attacks, like, defeat the target, kill him, uh, you take another turn, and you have a 50% chance to gain crit up. So that means if you follow up in a perfect world, if you use his special, then follow up with an attack here, you can not only kill one opponent, take another turn with critical chance up and offense up, and then basic a different character, kill them, and move on to an adjacent character. Obviously, this is if everything goes right, but the fact that this is possible is huge. His leadership ability is the, is the total package and why he's so important. Kingdom teammates gain the following, 8% bonus speed. Well, Kingdom, 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 Shanyu. So you have a full kingdom team with one exception, and her job is just to heal anyway. So she can be replaced or not. That's up to you. But this team will do a lot of work for you. So this is the team I would recommend. I'm going to 
kind of show it off to you a little bit in a fight. Um, as for spells, you'll use Magical Meteor and Trigger as early as you can, but they're not great. Magical Meteor is very lackluster, so I would recommend on this specific team, uh, Headless Horseman. It, he's the first tower character, so the second you unlock it, you'll be great. But the reason why is it does a pretty decent damage to a row, and you can kind of see how the row damage is what this team does. It also inflicts fear for two turns. Fear is a status effect that we'll get into in another video in more detail, but it prevents people from dodging and uh, evading uh, debuffs. So it is way more likely that your slows and everything will stick when a character is feared. That's pretty much it. So let's take a quick look at a fight and I'll show you what they can do. All right, so we're in the fight. Now it's just kind of showcase. I'll do it on slow so you can see everything. This is how we're gonna start off with Shanyu. Mickey's gonna ult. Didn't get any slows, that's unfortunate. Now we're gonna use Aladdin's carpet. Man. Didn't even get a turn. Uh, under normal circumstances, the right play is to make a taunt because your guys are not necessarily the healthiest characters. So summon a Raja who will sit here and take the next attack. Now, as we've said before, we can do this, which would then allow us to take another turn and progress. I wouldn't necessarily advise doing the thing I just said. Uh, you didn't need to. That was definitely easier. But I want to showcase the moves. Now, uh, no one needs a heal and no one is slowed. No one also has any debuffs. So I'm going to target a different character and see how much damage this does. Same thing, we're gonna use Mickey's ability to try to hit him and do some extra damage. Turn rewind, maybe. Not bad. Aladdin gets to slam dunk. And he's gone. Notice I'm keeping these characters. Now this is the the back half of the M, almost a, a, a upside down V now. And I'm going to just work on one character with Raja. It doesn't do much, but it's another character. We're gonna use a la uh, Jasmine's ability here. Now let's see what he does. Killed him, no chain, unfortunate. Yeah, see, so he ate two attacks there, making him absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> Uh, none of my characters have taken any damage. And he even gets he even gets a kill. Good for him, Raja. Raja's living his best life right now. Now, I can do this. But since I don't need to defense down him, really. Eh, I might as well. He got offense up. He got defense down. This is going to hurt. He's dead now. That's pretty much how the team's gonna work. Now, as you're leveling with this team, uh, oh, I guess there's more fight. You know what? I'm confident in this team's ability, so I'll just talk. As you're leveling this team, you'll notice it gets stronger and stronger, and then it starts to plateau. It starts becoming a little bit more about knowing how to do fights. This is obviously not a PvP matchup. This is a PvE matchup. I'm doing a, a random node in a fight that's roughly the same power as me. Uh, so, you should see that one of the key components of this team is stars. A lot of them have at least five star or higher. That is important to growth. Getting the characters at a higher star level is going to help them feel better. Uh, every star in this game matters, including the last one, the seventh. That's why it costs so much to upgrade. Gear matters, stars matter, but that's why you work on full teams. So if this is the team you ended up starting with and you work towards, you should have a lot of success in a lot of different stages of the game. This is mostly a hero's team. And again, you'll notice that Shan Yu is a villain, so it's very unlikely you will be able to use him in the hero's campaign, but you've been given an option of using Buzz or pretty much any other hero will be okay with this kind of team. Uh, Robin Hood or uh, Mulan, who's became available as of the global launch. Any of them are accessible in this team. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're keeping your team alive. 
the trick to PvE is sustain, it's not damage. Yes, eventually you'll do so much damage that it won't matter, but that's eventually not for progression, so be very careful about that. Other than that, uh, comment below, let me know what team you started with or what team you want to start with, and I'll try to give you some feedback as to whether or not I think that's uh, optimal for you or not. This team will definitely help you progress through a very large chunk of the game, but not everything, so I will have some more videos talking about, for example, a perfect villains team to work on. Uh, other than that, thanks you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.